Good day. Welcome to your first Skype lesson brought to you by TurnAble.org. As you can see from the screen, these lessons are brought to you by TurnAble.org. If you would like to join the sessions permanently, you need to go onto the website and then join the actual lessons of the grade, sorry, to join the class of the grade 11 mathematics. What is the benefit of that? Benefit of that? Well, for one thing, you can message me, which means that if I'm explaining something that is technically very difficult, or if there's something you want me to go through in the next lesson, then you can message me and I will look at those messages and I will see what you've said, and then I can address those things in the next lesson. Also, there are hundreds and hundreds of resources on the Turnable website. There are lessons, there are exams, papers, there's multiple choice questions, you can practice to your heart's content and everything on it is free. So there we go. Right, now what I've decided to do is I've started by doing a revision lesson. I've started right at the beginning of the start of the year's work with exponents and thirds. Why have I done that? Because through my years of teaching I've found that exponents especially, or indices, whichever you prefer to call them, are usually the weakest part of the algebraic section for my grade 11. So let's start with them. Let's make sure you guys understand it and then we can move on to the different, different sections. Okay, so what we're going to do first is revise the laws because if you don't know the exponent laws or the indice laws, you are not going to be able to do the sums, okay, which are based on these laws. So the first law is this, a to the naught is equal to 1. And this is difficult to understand at this point if you think of this as the first law. So a to the naught is equal to 1. What this is saying is that anything to the 0 is equal to 1. Okay, anything that is to the power of 0 is equal to 1. And I'll explain that to you in a second. First, let's move on to the next law, which says a to the m times by a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n. Let's do a little example. Let's say, for example, you have got 2 cubed times 2 to the 4, okay? Do you agree that I can write that out as 2 times 2 times 2, and I can write this out as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2? Okay, I'm not looking to multiply this out. I'm looking to prove this rule. So how many 2's do I have? I've got 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that becomes 2 to the power of 7. But do you see that that actually obeys this rule here that says that if we've got the same base, then we can add the indices or the exponents to get the value of that exponent. Okay, so that is your second rule. The third rule, and actually these come in no particular order, is a to the m to the power of n is equal to a to the mn. And again, I'm going to use an example to show you how this works. So let's go example. And let's say we've got 3 squared all to the power of 3. Okay, so what is it saying? That's saying everything in the bracket is cubed. So it doesn't really matter what I've got in the bracket. I've got that times that times that. But now I can rewrite that as saying 3 squared times 3 squared times 3 squared. Now I could do this slowly or I could use the rule that I just learned. And the rule that I just learned was that if I'm multiplying and I've got the same base, what do I do? I add the exponents. So that's what I've got. Three is the base all the way through and what can I do with these exponents now? I can add them and 2 plus 2 is 4 plus 2 is 6. So therefore 3 to the power of 2 all to the power of 3 is equal to 3 to the 6 and what are you really doing? You are multiplying across the bracket. So the way I remember this and I'm being honest here, the way I remember it still after all these years of teaching is I go, oh, the bracket means multiply. So that becomes 3 to the power of 6. But there's your proof. Right. Now, the next rule says if we've got a, b to the power of n, that can be rewritten as a to the n times b to the n. Okay. So what are we saying? We're saying that everything inside the bracket is equal to, is 
given the power of the thing outside the bracket. Okay, let me give you an example. If I have three times five, and I take it to the power of two, then what we're doing is we're going three squared times five squared, okay? That is that rule there, okay? That everything within the bracket is the power of that value up there, right? Now, we've got a to the m divided by a to the n is equal to a to the m minus n. So let's do an example again. Let's say I've got six to the power of four divided by six to the power of, I don't know, two. Okay, so do you agree I can write this to be six times six times six times six divided by six times six? But how do we write divisions? We actually do it as a fraction. So we go six times six times six times six all over six times six and then we can cancel that cancels with that that cancels with that and what are we left with we're left with six squared so therefore we can see that four minus two is two so the rule is that if we have the same base it has to be the same base then division means to subtract the exponents now why is this important do you remember I said to you that a to the zero equals one? Well, let's think about that. If I give you um, six to the three divided by six to the three, do you agree that that can be rewritten as six to the three minus three, which is six to the zero? But if I rewrote this as a fraction, let me rewrite that as a fraction, I'm going to do it up here. If I write as a fraction, we've got six cubed over six cubed. What is six cubed divided by six cubed? Well, anything divided by itself is one. So obviously six to the three minus three is the same as six to the zero, which equals one. So there, I've just proven to you that anything to the power of zero is one. Right, and now this law says again that a over b to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n over b to the power of n. Now we already know that if we multiply something, if we've got a b to the power of n or m, then that becomes a to the m b to the m. Okay, so this is extending that, but instead of it being a multiplication or a product inside the brackets, it's now a division, okay? So all it is, is if, for example, I have 2 over 3 to the power of 4, then that would be the same as saying 2 to the power of 4 over 3 to the power of 4. That's all that that is doing, is saying that you can multiply that power into the bracket. So now let's do some practicing of the product rule. Okay, now this is obviously very easy. We're going to take it in baby steps and then we're going to move to more difficult examples. Okay, so let's start off with this and I'm going to take it first, show you how we get it again and then just do the product rule. So if I didn't know the product rule, then I could say, well, x cubed is x times x times x, right? Times what's x to the 6? It is x two, three, four, five, six, which is obviously x to the nine. Okay, so if you didn't know the product rule, you could actually write it all out and get to the value. But let's get real, grade 11s. You're never going to get something that easy in exams. And also, if you've got x, x to 27 times by x to the 31, do you really want to be writing out those x's? No, you don't. You want to know the rule. And the rule says that a to the m times a to the n is a to the m plus n. If we have the same base, we can add the exponents. So 3 plus 6 is going to equal 9. There you go. Now let's look at this question. So this question is a little bit of a step up from that one because you've got multiple variables, we've got different variables. So it's exactly the same principle, we just have to look at the separate variables separately. Okay, so in other words, we're going to take our x's first. 
And what have we got? We've got x squared, okay, multiplied by x cubed. And then we've got y multiplied by y to the 4. So all I've done here is I've rewritten these two brackets so that my x's are next to each other and my y's are next to each other. And the only reason I've done that is because these are obviously common bases and these are common bases and then it's easier to see. Right, so if we look at this, we've got x and what do we know? If it's got a common base, what can we do to the exponents? We can add them. So 2 plus 3 is 5. Now let's do the y. Now there is no number above the y, but there is an implied 1. Okay, if there's no number, we write, we never write down 1. We don't write down 1a. Okay, we just write down a. So if we've got 1 plus 4, we get 5. So you've got x to the 5, y to the 5. Okay, and that is your answer. End of story. Now let's look at the quotient rule. The quotient rule said that if you had a to the m over a to the n, then what does it become? It becomes a to the m minus n. Remember that? Okay, so now we're going to apply this. Okay, so if you didn't know the quotient rule, you could write this out. You could go x times x times x times x times x, that's five x's, over x times x times x, and then you could cancel the x's, and you're left with x squared. But again, you're in grade 11. You're not going to get something like this. So you need to know the rules. And the rules are saying that if you've got a common base, you can subtract your exponents. So you can go x to the 5 minus 3, which is x squared. Okay, now we're going to go step up again. And we're going to look at the fact that we've got two different variables here. And we're going to treat them separately. So we're going to go x to the 2 minus your implied 1, so it's 2 minus 1, times by y to the 5 minus 3. 2 minus 1 is just 1, so we don't write it down. You can write x to the 1, okay? But try not to. It looks unprofessional. The mathematics mathematicians frown upon it for some reason. So then you've got y to the 5 minus 3 is 2. So if I wanted to write that neatly, we'd go x, y squared. And remember what I said? Actually, I didn't say it to you. I said it to the grade 10. Sorry. We always write our variables in alphabetical order. Okay. Why? Because then it's easier when we're looking at expressions, long expressions with lots of variables to be able to identify like terms. So these are always written alphabetically. Right, now let's look at examples for our power rule. So we've got 2a squared all to the power of 3. And that's the important thing, that it's all to the power of 3, which means we've got 2 to the power of 3, and we've got a squared all to the power of 3. And what does that mean? It means that we are going to be multiplying across the bracket here. But first, let's do this number. Don't forget to do the number. So 2 cubed is 8. OK, 2 times 2 is 4 times by 2 makes 8. So it's 2 cubed is 8. Then we've got a. And remember, what do we do here? We multiply across the bracket. So it becomes a. 2 times 3 is 6. So it's a. 6, 8, 8 to the 6. Okay, now let's look at this example. Again, remember that this 3 applies to everything inside the bracket. So we're going to take it nice and slowly. We're going to say 2 to the power of 3, x to the power of 3, all over 3 to the power of 3, times by y squared to the power of 3. Okay, which becomes what? Okay, now normally grade 11s, I would write, keep writing down with the equal signs underneath. Obviously, I don't have space, but you don't write next to each other like this, like I'm doing in the exams. You always write underneath 
and always your equal signs underneath each other, okay? So 2 cubed is 8, x cubed, all over 3 cubed. Well, 3 cubed, let's think about this, 3 times 3 is 9, times by 3 is 27. So you could put that in the calculator, or you could get to know that 3 cubed is 27. And what do we do across the brackets? We multiply, so it becomes y to the 6. Okay, so that there is now complete because 8 and 27 have got no common factors and X and Y are different bases. There's nothing more we can do here. Right, before I go on to this question, I just want to erase all this writing because this looks like a long question. So let's do that quickly. Raise all ink. Right, so let's look at this one. So the whole of this bracket is the power of 3. Like every single thing in this bracket is the power of 3. So we're going to do that nice and slowly. We're going to go 4 to the power of 3 times by x to the power of 5 all to the power of 3 times by y, remember it's to the power of 1 all to the power of 3 all over 20 to the power of 3 x to the power of 3, y to the 5, all to the power of 3. Now before we carry on, we look at this and we might go 20 to the power of 3. Wow, that's a big number. There must be an easier way to do this question. And there is. There's a much easier way. What we're going to do is we're going to factorize this expression first. We're first going to simplify this and once we've done that then we're going to do it to the power of 3. So let us do that. So first things first is we're going to simplify this. So first or 4 goes in 20 to 25 times so we're left with a 5 at the bottom. We've got x to the 5 at the top and x at the bottom so you're left with x to the 4 at the top, okay, because that's 5 minus 1. If you look, I want to look at that separately, you've got x to the power of 5 over x, which is the same as x to the 5 minus 1, which is x to the 4, okay? And then you've got y at the top and y to the 5 at the bottom, so you're left with y to the 4 at the bottom, all to the power of 3. And doesn't that look much prettier and much more doable than that horrible 20 to the power of 3? So now we can do this nice and slowly again. We've got x to the 4 to the power of 3. So it's x to the 4 to the power of 3 all over 5 to the power of 3 times by y to the 4 all to the power of 3. Okay, and remember what we do? We multiply across the brackets. That becomes x to the 12, 5 cubed. Well, let's think about that. That's 5 times 5 is 25, times by 5 is 125. So you can either do it like that, or you can put it in your calculator. So you get 125 y to the 4 times 3 is again. 12. Okay, and that is your final answer. So if you see something like this, don't blindly just go into cubing the, everything because sometimes you need to just look for common factors and factorize first to make it into a much simpler expression before you cube it. Right, let's look at some more examples. Aha, uh -huh. so now we've got some nice mixed examples and we're going to do them nice and slowly. But before we look onto the max examples, we've got some rules. Okay, and what we're showing you here is that a to the minus n over b is equal to 1 over a to the n times by b. Okay, how do we get that? How did that come about? Let's think about this. Do you agree that a to the negative n means 1 over over a. Okay, that is the rule. The minus means that you're taking it across the fraction line. So what we're doing is we're now looking at our negative exponents, our negative exponents. 
okay? A to the negative n is equal to 1 over a to the power of n, okay? If I had 1 over a to the minus n, then that should be a to the n over 1, which we could just write as a to the n. So the minus means that we are taking it across the quotient line. That's what that minus means. It doesn't matter what the value of n is, the minus just means we're taking it across the quotient line. So if we look over here, we've got, if I had to rewrite this, we'd have a to the minus n over b which could be written as a to the minus n times by 1 over b, if you wanted to. But what does this a to the minus n mean? Well, a to the minus n means we're taking a to the n, we're putting it on the other side of the quotient line. So that becomes 1 over a to the n times by 1 over b, which is just 1 over a to the n times by b. Okay, so all I did was separate it out there so you could see what was going on. Okay, right, let me erase that and then we can look at the next one, the next example. Yeah, we've got a to the, a divided by b to the minus n is equal to a b to the power of n over 1. Okay, so what is happening here? Remember what I said to you was that if you have a to the minus n, it's, and it's over 1, it's implied 1, that becomes 1 over a to the minus n, because the minus means you're taking it across the quotient rule, quotient line. But same goes for this. I mean, that's a plus, sorry. If you're doing 1 over a to the minus n, what does it become? We're taking it cross the quotient because the minus so it becomes a to the n over one okay quotient is just a really big word for dividing okay or divider so don't stress about this all we're saying is that we're taking it over or under the line we're taking it across the line if you want to think of it that way the dividing line so yeah we've got a over b to the minus n which can be rewritten as a over one times by 1 over b to the minus n. But what does that minus mean? It means that we're taking that whole thing and we're taking it to the other side and then it becomes positive. So it becomes a over 1 times b to the n over 1, right? And then that's obviously just a b to the n over 1 as they've written. But anything divided by 1 is just that thing, so you don't have to write that bit. Right, let's look at this complicated one here. Now, the rule is that everything inside the bracket has to be to the power of what's outside. So remember we said that a over b to the power of n is equal to a to the n over b to the n, right? But now there's a minus, okay? So what does that mean? It means that everything inside this bracket is to the power of minus n. So if I wrote that now, we'd have a to the minus n over b to the minus n, right? But now, do you agree that I could write it as a to the minus n times by 1 over b to the minus n? But there's an implied, I always write it in little dotted lines here so you could see it's a to the minus 9 divided by 1. That's what it's really saying, okay? Just that we don't write it because it's just a to the minus, nine, minus n. That's the value of it, right? So now, what are we doing? The minus makes it go to the other side of the dividing line, the quotient line. So that becomes 1 over a to the n times by this minus does what? It takes it to the other side of this line, okay? So therefore, it becomes b to the n over 1. So then I can just multiply these together so it becomes b to the n over a to the n. There we go. And that's how they get that. So now you've learned how you use negative exponents. So let's do a couple of examples. The easiest one, yeah, we've got a y to the minus 7. And what's important is to realize that there's an implied divide by 1, which means that this minus is taking this y to the other side of this line. 
So it becomes 1 over y to the 7. You're inverting basically. Similarly over here, we're taking this minus means you're taking the whole of this and taking it to the top. So it becomes x to the 5 all over 1. Okay. Now let's look at this question. This question is exactly the same as the last example we did, except that the bases are the same. So let's do it nice and slowly. This minus means that x to the 4 is going to the bottom. Okay, so that's x to the 4. That minus means that x to the 9 is going to the top. That's x to the 9. But now, since they've got the same basis, we can apply the quotient rule. And the quotient rule says that if you've got the same basis, you can subtract the exponents. So you've got x to the 9 minus 4, which is x to the 5. Ta-da! Okay, let's do this example. Now you'll notice that what's special about this example is that we've got numbers here as well. We also have a positive exponent and a negative, negative exponent, okay? So this is slightly more complicated than the other examples. So let's have a look at this. The first thing I always do is see if I can factorize or simplify, if I can cancel anything. And I can see that 12 goes nicely into 24 twice, okay? So I can cancel this and I'm left with 2. So I've got 2x to the 6 over x to the minus 8, right? But what does this minus mean? The minus means that I can take this x to the 8 to the top of the divide by line. So it becomes 2x to the 6, x to the 8. And now we've got the product rule. Because x and x are common bases, so what does that mean? It means that we can add, add these terms. So 6 plus 8 is 14. There we go. So that's how we can practice using our neg negative exponents. Right, now we're going to look at a couple more mixed examples. Okay. So we have got 3x squared y to the minus 3 over 12x to 6 y cubed. So again, the very first thing I always do is look to see if I can factorize or cancel anything. Okay, and I'm talking about the numbers. The first thing I do is I look at my numbers, not the variables, my numbers. And I see, oh, but 3 goes into 12 four times. So I can cancel that and that gives me a 4. Okay, now there are a couple ways we can do the sum. I'm going to show you both ways so that you can get an idea how you can do it. And both of the ways, or both ways that I'm going to show you are viable. You can do it either way. So the first thing you can say is, well, that means that we've got x squared y to the negative 3 over 4x 6y cubed. Okay, right. Then I can say, well, we've got two x's here and we've got x to the 6 there. So I could actually think in this sense that I'm cancelling them. Okay. In other words, in my head, I'm going x times x times y to the negative 3 over 4 times x times x times x times x times y cubed. And I go cancel, 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 cancel. And I'm left with y to negative 3 over 4x squared y cubed. I then have to solve the y dilemma, as we call it. And this minus means we're taking it to the other side. Okay, which means we have 1 over, and please don't forget that 1. So many students, as soon as they take this down, forget about the fact that this all is now a denominator, and they just write 4x squared, y cubed, y cubed, and they don't write it as a denominator, and then they get it wrong. So please, as soon as you take this down, if this is the only numerator you have, you've got to write 1 as your numerator. So then it becomes 1 over 4x squared, and then we use the product rule, common basis, and then 3 plus 3 is 6, so we've got y to the 6. So that's one way to do the sum. 
The other way to do the sum, and I'm going to show it to you now, is to work it out using the fact that everything you divide by is a minus and everything you multiply is a times. So again, we're going to work with the numbers and we're going to write 1 over 4 for the numbers, okay? But now what I'm going to do is say, okay, fine, I've got x squared, but this is x to the 6. So I'm basically using my quotient rule just with this bit here. Okay, so I've got x squared over x to the 6. I'm going, well, the quotient rule says that they're common bases, so it becomes 2 minus 6. Okay, so I'm going x squared minus 6. Then we've got y, and again I'm using my quotient rule. I've got y to the minus 3 over y to the 3. And what does that become? It becomes y to the minus 3 minus 3. So I write that down, minus 3, minus 3. So what does that become? It becomes 1. I'm just leaving that there just for the sake of making sure we understand what's going on. x, 2 minus 6 is minus 4 times y. Minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6 all over 4. Now what does the minus mean? The minus means we take it to the other side of the divide by our line. So what are we left with? We're left with 1 over x4, x to the 4, y to the 6. Okay, and that is the other way of doing this. Okay, so you need to be careful of this. I just realized I think I made a mistake in the previous one that I didn't write sixes and I ended up with x squared at the bottom. Never mind. Either way is perfectly correct, okay? This is the way that you're going to be doing it in grade 12 and it's the way that they actually want you to do it. So I want you to start practicing using this method and I will do more examples as we go through it, okay? But the, you want to be grouping your variables, your denominators of your, I mean your bases, and then I want you to be adding and subtracting using your rules. Okay, let's move on to the next example. So the next example, we've got 2x cubed y to the minus 3 all to the power of minus 2, okay? All to the power of minus 2. So, there are again two ways we can do this. The one way is to multiply everything in this bracket to the power of minus 2. So, let's do that first, and I'll show you that method first. So, let's do that. We've got then 2 to the power of minus 2, x cubed all to the power of minus 2, times y to the negative 3 all to the power of minus 2. So, now... 2 to the power of minus 2 is going to be 1 quarter, okay? How do I get that? Well, this minus means 1 over, so that is the same as, that can be rewritten as, 2 to the negative 2 can be written as 1 over 2 squared, which can be written as 1 quarter, okay? Then we've got times by, and what do we do with this? We multiply across the brackets, so it becomes x, 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, okay? Times by, a minus times a minus is a plus, so we've got y, 3 times 2 is 6, okay? Now remember that whenever we write any fraction, I mean any number or variable, has a positive integer that there is an implied divide by one underneath it, okay? And why is that important? Because when you have a negative exponent, the negative means that we're taking it across that divide by line. So therefore we can rewrite this as one over four times one over x to the six times y to the six which if we then bring together becomes y to the 6 over 4x to the 6. Okay, now that's one way to do it. It's perfectly acceptable. It's a very good me method. Let me show you another way you could do the same sum. 
I don't mean to confuse you by showing you different ways. I just think that a lot of people have different ways to the, the way they think and that you need to be able to do either way, whichever way suits you. So I'm going to show the other way and then you choose which method is easiest for you. Okay, both are legitimate. So the next way to do it is to look at the fact that this is a negative and to think, well, if that's a negative, everything in this bracket has to be under one. So I could rewrite that as one over two x cubed y to negative three all squared. Okay, and then we apply the squared to everything in the bracket, just like usual. So we've got 1 over 2 squared, 2 squared, x cubed, all to the power of 2, times by y to the negative 3, all squared. Okay, which then becomes 1 over 2 squared, 2 squared is 4, we multiply this across the brackets becomes x to the 6. We multiply across the brackets again, it becomes y to the negative 6. What does this minus sign mean? It means that we are taking it across to the other side. So it becomes y to the 6 all over 4x to the 6. There you go. You guys need to choose the method that is best for you. Okay, both are correct. Right, now this question. This is a very nice question because it brings together quite a lot of what we've learned when it comes to exponent laws and simplification. So let's have a look at this. And again, there are multiple ways of doing it. I'm only going to show you one way right now, otherwise I'll be here the whole day. Okay, and then you guys need to go watch this video again if you want to. Stop it at the beginning of the question and then try it for yourself without looking at how I did it. And it doesn't matter if you use a different method, as long as your mathematics is sound and you get to the same answer. Okay, so let's do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the second method that we did in the last question. I'm going to realize that this minus means that this thing is flipped. Okay, so that means that we've got three a cubed, b to the 4, c cubed, all over minus 7, a squared, b cubed, c to the 0, all to the power of 4. Okay? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify everything inside the bracket before I try and apply this power of 4. Okay? So 3 over 7, nothing can be cancelled there. So we're left with our 3 and we're left with our minus 7. Now, I am going to use a method that we spoke about before where I'm going to look at just my A's. Okay, just my A's and I'm going to use the quotient rule. So I'm going to go A to the 3 minus 2. Then I'm going to look at my B's and I'm going to go b to the 4 minus 3. Then I'm going to look at my c's and I've got c to the 3 minus 0. Now some of you might have already realized that that's of c to the 0 and therefore that's 1 and it can be cancelled. That's great. That's awesome. I have no problems with that. None whatsoever. Okay. I'm just writing it out nice and slowly. For those of us that didn't see that anything to the 0 was 1. Okay. So now let's carry on. We've got 3 over negative 7. Okay, a to the 3 minus 2 just becomes a. b, 4 minus 3 is just b. And c, 3 minus 0 is 3. And that's all to the power of 4. Right. And now we can apply that power of 4 to the whole of this. Okay. So that becomes, I'm going to write it on this side. We've got 3 to the power of 4 times by a to the power of 4, b to the power of 4, and c cubed to the power of 4, all over minus 7 to the power of 4. 
Right. So 3 to the power of 4 is what? Let's think about it. We've got 3 times 3 is 9, times by 3 is 27, times by 3 is 81. So that is 81, a to the 4, b to the 4, and what is 3 times 4? Well, I'm really hoping that you know that 3 times 4 is 12. So that becomes c to the 12 over. Now note that the minus is in the bracket as well. And a minus with a positive exponent becomes plus. Why is that? Because a minus times a minus is a plus. Then we multiply it with a minus again, becomes a minus. Then we multiply it with a minus again, and becomes a plus. Okay, so any negative number, when it is taken to the power of a positive, becomes positive. Okay, and then we're looking at 7 to the power of 4. And 7 to the power of 4 is 343. You can either put that in your calculator or you can multiply it out yourself, but I'm running out of time. I've only got four more minutes for this lesson. So I am just telling you that 7 to the power of 4 is 343. Right, let's look at this question, okay? It's a very similar question, and I'm going to work through this question. And again, I'm going to use exactly the same method that I did before. I'm going to realize that this minus means that these two are swapped, okay? So we end up with 3a squared b cubed c to the 7 all over minus 2a cubed b squared. And I'm at this point going to go, well, c to the 0 is 1. Anything times by 1 is that thing, so I'm ignoring it. And this is all squared. Then I'm going to look at factorizing or simplifying inside my bracket. 3 and 2, no similar factors. They just stay 3 and this stays minus 2. Oh, I apologize for the skew line. Now we're going to use our quotient rule. So we're going to go a squared minus 3, b cubed minus 2, times by c to the 7, all squared. So that becomes 3. a to the 2 minus 3 becomes minus 1. Okay, 2 minus 3 is minus 1. b, 3 minus 2 is just 1. We're not going to write it down. And c to the 7, all over minus 2, and it's all still squared. Now we can apply that 2 to everything inside the bracket, as we usually do. So 3 squared is 9. A to the negative 1 times by 2, that becomes A to the negative 1 squared. Then we've got B to the 1, remember it's implied, squared, times by C to the 7 squared, all over minus 2 squared. Okay, so it becomes 9. A to the negative 1 squared is A to the negative 2. B to the 1 times 2 is B squared. Remember, we multiply across the bracket, so 7 times 2 is 14, all over, what is this, minus 2 times minus 2. Minus 2 times minus 2 is going to be positive 4. So we're almost finished. What have we not done? The last thing that we haven't done is taken this negative exponent and taken it to the bottom. So that's what we need to do. We're going to go 9, b squared, c to the 14 over 4a squared. I apologize for my bad handwriting here. Right, and that is as far as we're going today. So in our next lesson, we're going to start with prime numbers and looking at prime factorization and moving on to our thirds. Please, grade 11s, if you've missed anything in this lesson, go back to the to enable system, go look at this live session, and you can click it again. Obviously, it won't be live, but you'll be able to see a recording of it. And again, as I've mentioned before, what I'd really suggest you do is you start off, whenever I bring up a new example, just pause the video and try the question for yourself, and then see if you got it right. Also, remember to join 
the this this actual class, the grade 11 mathematics class, because if you do that on the two enable system, then you can actually, oh, I just saw that Michael told me that you've got that seven to the power of four is 300 and uh, seven to the power of three is 343. Okay, thank you that Michael. Okay, so, right, now, I am going to love and leave you. Please join us again on Wednesday. Have a great day. Did I say? Shit. Shit, I did. Shit. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs>